Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK news video. No time to waste. So Microsoft recently increased its Game Pass uh, subscription prices across the board in various regions across the globe. And uh, yeah, we covered it as did other media sites. So all's fair in services and subscription wars. We're going to cover this news story because I mentioned it that Sony could follow Microsoft and increase prices somewhere along the line, subscriptions, what have you. And it looks like that's exactly what Sony Interactive Entertainment Corporation has done. And the PlayStation community has hit back after Sony quietly, stealthily, some would say sneakily, increased game prices yet again. This one, courtesy of DualShockers.com, all links available as usual in the description. So yeah, video game prices are steadily increasing. Some regions like Turkey are seeing significant spikes that are unaffordable for many players. PlayStation's recent price hike in Turkey, where the average salary is about $400 a month, has sparked outrage among gamers for being too expensive. Sony is facing criticism for prioritizing profit over player accessibility, prompting calls for fair pricing adjustments in the region. So yeah, video games are already costing some of us an arm and a leg, so it is a fortunate pastime if you can get into it, very fortunate. And in spite of these subscription services allowing greater access to the masses, video gaming is still very much a luxury pursuit. But what makes this even more egregious than the recent Game Pass increases is that in Turkey, games were 60 euros, the equivalent of 60 euros, and they've gone up to 85. That's a 15 euro increase, way higher than anything Microsoft did in their recent uh, 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 price increase across their tiers. So, you know, some would say, well, yeah, if games are going expensive, why don't you just go and subscribe to Sony's PlayStation Plus service? Well, here's the problem with that. You won't get any day one releases there. Unlike the highest tier on the Xbox Game Pass uh, subscription, there is no day one Sony games releasing. So you're still, whether you want to subscribe or not, you still have to pony up, find the cash if you really want to play those most recent releases. So that's the egregious part of this, that a 15 euro increase from 60 to 85 in a country that has nowhere near the equivalent of the wage salary of the rest of the European countries. And yeah, there'll be some people who will selfishly say, well, it's happening in Turkey. It's not happening in my region. It's not happening in North America. It's not happening in the, you know, the United Kingdom. It's not happening in France or, or Brazil or wherever you're from, Germany. Well, hey, an affront to one is an affront to all. This is where it begins. There's always a test bed somewhere, whether it's a singular uh, region or an entire continent. There is always a test bed for, you know, feeling out how far companies, corporations can go. So it's never good news to hear that our beloved titles will be more costly than ever before. As the industry changes for good and bad, so do subscription prices, as seen with the latest Xbox Game Pass hike. And even though PlayStation received an increase in its subscription service last year for its three-tier system, gaming prices are showing no signs of stability. Even though in 2020, former PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan justified its 20% increase due to players spending more of their time getting stuck into the latest video games than any other form of media. One country is livid to see a rise in the price due to its 400 per month salary. And that's on average $400. So, as reported by Twitter X user and video game media executive Amir, the prices for gaming titles in Turkey have now gone up to $85, the equivalent of $85, whereas just a few weeks ago, Assassin's Creed Shadows, for example, was only 2,000 Turkish lira, around 60 US dollars. Although it is to be expected that prices will and have shot up globally in recent times, the issue here lies in Turkey's median salary which is around 400 US dollars per month as specified. Amir goes as far as saying that these prices laid out by Sony should be quote unquote illegal 
and that the company hasn't taken into consideration how many players in Turkey will now not be able to play future games or at least struggle with affording them. Here's a quote. This is in a country with a 400 US dollar median salary. What the actual hell? Gaming on PC is much cheaper in comparison and literally cannot afford games on PS5 anymore due to this. End of quote. Emir isn't the only PlayStation fan to feel hard done by and peeved off. I won't say what's actually posted here. Peeved off at uh, the apparent greed and lack of empathy as other gamers have weighed in on the outrage. Now you would think that a company that makes billions of profit would want to satisfy their base and the less fortunate people that live in a country where the exchange rate is bad, but no, they double down cause the scared people are gonna abuse this. Well, good on you for speaking out about it, said one reply to the post. And uh, another poster said, as a Turkish citizen, I wonder what Sony is thinking of uh, that it will be reasonable to sell games here at 80 euros. We have the same prices as the EU, but earn nowhere close to what they do. Meanwhile, despite the price hike, Microsoft still offers Game Pass at affordable prices in Turkey. Well, here's hoping that Sony will look into this issue with its uh, PlayStation pricing in Turkey sooner rather than later, as no one should miss out on playing some of those really high impact, high anticipated games on their favorite gaming system, covering their favorite gaming franchises, merely because of greed and a lack of basic understanding. Whoa, slow the roll. 80 euros. I was thinking $80 equivalent. That's even higher. What was it before? 60 euros? Is this a 20 euro increase? Was it 65 euros? I'm slightly confused by this, but nevertheless, it sounds terrible. The optics are terrible. How long before game prices hit the all time high of 100 euros in some regions? We're already getting these $100 plus game packages with uh, day one DLC expansion stuff removed from the game that should have really been in the game at launch. They're just uh, cutting it side, adding it on like an add-on and charging you a premium price if you want to play that, hence Star Wars Outlaws and that whole Jabba the Hutt package. Yeah, not looking good, guys. Interesting stuff. Very interesting indeed. Well, there you have it, folks. Sony increasing prices not long after Microsoft and it's something I suspected because all it takes is one to fire the bullet then the other follows suit and I know I know it was Sony who uh, increased the uh, subscription prices for PlayStation Plus across all three tiers prior to Microsoft but this is how they do it in tandem you know one takes a turn the other does and then they can sort of blame each other it's a little bit like politics you know Democrats Republicans, uh, Labour, Conservative, they're all there to criticise each other. But when they gain control, get into power, they do similarly disappointing, egregious things. I mean, if these parties were satisfactory, we wouldn't keep swapping them over every other term or election. So just take it as an analogy. I'm not really here to do any politicking, politicizing. I'm not here for the political thing. I'm just trying to uh, outline that there's not much difference between Sony and Microsoft when it comes to the bottom line. And I can already see the posts. Game on PC, ditch console. Consoles are overpriced. You pay online, you blah, blah, this, you yada, yada, that. Game on PC, and if that's what you want to do, go ahead. I mean, yeah, if you've got a sufficiently powerful enough gaming rig, yeah, outclass console all day, every day of the week. But it's about greed here. Greed. G R E E D. So it doesn't matter about this uh, open source platform or which console or which company licenses out their stuff to developers and publishers. It's about greed. They will penny pinch, nickel and dime you for everything you've got until they just squeeze some people out. I mean, let's be honest, when the Xbox 360 was coming to the end of its tenure and they were introducing Xbox One as this always connected, requiring internet, they didn't care back then who had internet or not because microsoft and to some extent sony 
already knew the losses they'd make on those who didn't have good internet or no internet at all, they'd make that back up in microtransactions, add-ons, expansion packs, what have you. They knew that they could easily just let go of that audience who cannot get onto the Xbox One and whatever due to uh, having a lack of internet or good internet. They knew they'd nickel and dime you in other ways to make up for the deficit. These people aren't stupid. They've got strategic planners. Way before these consoles come out, there's already a plan in place. They said, oh, there's a product for you. They don't really care about you. They only care about that money, that precious dollar, dollar bill, y'all. The euro, the pound, whatever your currency is. So yeah, I, I'm wondering what you're thinking in the comments about this one. Sound off, let me know how you feel because yeah, it might only be Turkey at this stage, but that's where it begins, one region at a time. You know, it could be Turkey today, France, Germany, South Africa, Brazil, Hungary tomorrow. It always starts somewhere, you know? Is it fair? And some people say, what do you mean fair? What are you, a 12 year old? But fair in the sense that, uh, you know, why pick on a country where the average income is significantly, comparatively lower than the rest of Europe? Are you trying to squeeze these people out? Are you forcing them onto a subscription service? Does that mean they miss out on day one games? I mean, it's only, as I say, fair to cover this story since we covered the Xbox Game Pass increases and I don't bat for any of these corporations. I merely enjoy the products and the high quality games on each of these systems. I care about the consumer's pocket, not corporations' bottom line. But let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this type of video, subscribe, hit notification, and until next time, play games, not corporations.